What's up guys, my name's Luke and welcome back to Motion and Design. So it's a nice cold day here in South Africa, so I'm in my gown, I'm very comfortable and what better day to do a tutorial. So yeah, I've been messing around more with the cloth dynamics and I wanted to do some ribbons. I saw some ribbons and I was like, oh, let's do a simulation on that, I thought it could be quite fun. So yeah, it's a pretty simple technique, but it also allows us to have quite a lot of control, especially like being able to swap different objects and have the ribbons kind of attract to it. It's going to be very similar to my Rings of Power tutorial. At least we're going to be using a similar technique, but this time it's going to be using cloth. So yeah, if you like this type of content, please consider liking and subscribing. And yeah, if you're interested in the project files and some other tutorials, check out my Patreon. But yeah, let's get straight into it. Cool, so let's just close this down over here. I'm going to be doing this in Redshift. Uh, if you're using Octane or even a standard renderer, you should be able to follow along. I mean, I'll show you guys how to render it at the very end, but I mean, it's super basic. But yeah, let's start. So let's grab a plane over here. Let's make the width 2 and the height can stay at 400. Let's press N and B. Let's zoom in over here and let's change our segments. So let's bring our width segments all the way down and our height segments to about 100. This should be fine. So looking at ribbons, they usually only bend on one axis. You just usually don't see them bend on multiple axes, but if you want to do that, then maybe add some more segments over here. But for the look that I was going for, we didn't really need any width segments, but yeah, that's up to you guys. Cool, so with our plane, just press N and A to get rid of the lines. And with our plane selected, let's add a cloner. Cool, so in our cloner over here, let's change this from three to five and let's set this to like 10 10 and zero cool so now we have a stack of our ribbons over here let's go to simulations and add a cloth tag press play right now cool it works but they fall down so let's go command d go into our simulations go into scene and turn off our gravity it's really funny almost every single person is doing like tutorials on like cloth that's how it goes. You show what it does and you turn off the gravity. I think I've seen maybe like two or three tutorials where people actually use gravity in the scene. Um, but yeah, so let's press play now. Cool, that looks good. Let's just do a few changes over here on our cloth tag. Let's turn our bendiness up to 100, our thickness down to one, and then our toggling to 110. Let's look again. Nice, I like that look. It has a lot more of a natural look to it so now with our cloner selected let's go simulate i guess we don't really need to have it selected but simulate forces turbulence we're just going to add a tiny bit of turbulence this isn't going to make much of a difference to the effect uh, but it's just doing it so that there's tiny bit of variation in it uh, and then also let's just add a rotator and with our rotator selected the direction that the blue line is going in, that's the way that it's going to rotate. So if I had to just press play now, you'll see that it's going to rotate like this. Cool. We want to face woods. So let's just rotate it 90 degrees. Perfect. Cool. So that's the basics over there. We can hide everything. And now let's get to the actual animation on this. So I'm going to use a helix for my animation. Um, you guys can obviously use any object you want. The same principles should apply. Even if you're using an actual object, it should apply. Uh, but yeah, for now, I'm going to use a helix. Let's change our radius to about 50, in radius to 50, and our height can stay at 200. Let's bring this down a bit so it's in the middle. And let's go and animate this. So let's change the 270. So all the animations in the scene are going to be done with our helix over here. Uh, yeah, you'll see what I mean in a sec. But let's go and animate this. So obviously you guys don't have to follow along exactly what I'm doing. But I mean, if you want to, you're more than welcome to. But yeah, I'm just going to show you the way that I got my specific result. Uh, the nice thing about this method is that you can kind of use anything, any sort of spline, any sort of object, uh, and the technique should still apply. So let's go to about frame 90. Let's change our height to something like that. Let's bring our, uh, maybe our start radius to like 150. The height down, something like that. 
let's go to like 180 let's bring this height far up and then bring our end radius down something like that and then let's go over here to 270 and let's just bring our height all the way down so let's see what that looks like it's gonna go down it's gonna bounce back up and then go back down again very simple but yeah it'll work for what we're trying to do so how are we going to get this helix to work with our simulation we're going to use a field force uh you should recognize this from that rings of power tutorial so it's very similar to that so with our field force selected let's drag our helix and put it inside let's change our distance from a long to radius and let's change our strength to something about 500 cool so now you see there's a few lines and if we had to press play over here. They go, but nothing really happens. And the reason for that is because if we go over here, our radius is only sent to 10 centimeters. So let's turn this up to about 100. And now we get a lot of lines, but we don't really want to see that. So let's go into our display and turn off this display box. Cool. Now let's see what this looks like. Nice, look at that. The ribbons stick to the helix over here. You get these really nice organic, it's really cool movements. And they follow the animation of the spline. So yeah, you can get quite in depth with uh, what you want to do with this because it will just follow the spline over here. So you'll notice right now that it's sticking very much to the spline. I mean, this does look cool, but maybe you're wanting it that the ribbons kind of fly off a little bit. So we can change that by animating our radius over here because with a high radius like this, it's going to make sure that it keeps it compact. But if we reduce this, let's go over here. Let's go to about 60. Let's set a keyframe over here and then bring this down to maybe 20. Let's see what that looks like. So in the beginning, it gets attracted. And then we still get these nice loose areas over here. And now we should probably still get them. Let's see. Yeah, we still get these nice loose areas over here. I think that looks really cool. This is also why we're gonna be using our turbulence uh, and rotation so that these little bits over here also move around seeing as though there's no, no gravity in the scene. And then let's go to maybe about like 210, set a keyframe of here. At the very end, let's set it back to 100. So, I mean, this over here could also work for like a logo reveal in a way. Have a bunch of ribbons, have your logo over there, use the text of your logo, and then have all of them kind of come together. You can have them loose in the beginning, but then at the end, they come very close together and it has your logo or text. There's a lot of variety of things that you could do with this. Cool. So another thing that you would have noticed in my render is that I have parts where it kind of goes fast and then has slow motion. And it's pretty cool. So let me show you how to do that. So let's just increase the number over here. Just something about like 20. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's just find out where we want to want to go slow motion. Something over here, it goes fast and then maybe over here. So at around 60. So let's go command D. And then in our simulation tab over here and the scene, you'll notice that there's a time scale and we can animate this. So let's go over here, set a keyframe up here on the time scale and go 10 frames forward and bring this down to something like 0.2. Uh, let's go forward a bit. Now you can see already that it goes super slow motion, which is super cool. Then over here at 110, let's bring it back up to one. Now it should go real time again. It's gonna shoot back upwards following our spline and maybe, maybe at like 180, we do it again. 0.2 and then over here. 
So this is very rough. I'd recommend actually going through and testing out what places actually look nice for it. Uh, but yeah, you'll notice right now over here, we're getting this really loose result, which doesn't look very nice. I think that's because of the fact that our radius is being brought down a lot. So let's just change that. So let's just figure out where. So it's going to 20, I think. Let's change this to 50. So it's not as drastic. And 50 over here. Uh, the reason I, you obviously don't need to do this, for me it was just that when it was going slow motion, I really wanted those like extra ribbons to kind of flow. I don't know, it just gave a really nice look and it gave like the slow motion a really nice look. Because I mean, if it was just like all packed up around the helix, it doesn't show the slow motion. It just kind of looks like it's now going slowly. But then having the ribbons going slowly and then, you know, slow motion, I thought that looked cool. Cool. So let's see what this looks like. Let's go and increase this to a count of like 20. And then let's go and cache this. Cool. And I was like, that's cached. Let's see what this looks like. Goes, goes slow motion. That looks really cool. Then it flows upwards, goes slow motion again, and then goes back. Uh, so it's cool, but I think the problem is that I kind of want to get rid of this, or at least bring it a little bit closer because it does not look very nice. Um, let me maybe do this at around like there and make this come back sooner. And let's recache this again. It is done caching. Let's see what it looks like. So I think there's a lot more work that needs to go into this to have it actually look nice and have the animation move nicely. But I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, I really did that. But I think for tutorial's sake, you can kind of see how to work around this. If it's too loose, you change the radius over here. The slow motion is with the time scale. And yeah, so you can just kind of mess around with that and create some really cool results. So let me show you how I rendered this. So we want to texture each of these a... Uh, a different color so that we have some nice, you know, different colors in it. Because I mean, if we had to just apply one color to it, it won't really look that nice. So with our cloner selected, let's go to MoGraph, Effector, and Random. Let's go into our parameters, turn off position, and we're going to change this color mode to Effector color. I think the reason it's not cache, but there we go. Cool. And now that that's done, let's go and use our renderer of choice. So I'm going to be using Redshift. If you're doing this in Octane, it's the same way. It's just, um, I think it's also like the color user data node or it's something like that. I actually can't remember. It's actually been a while since I've used Octane. Um, but yeah, let's go and let's just add a light to our scene so we can see what we're doing. And in our, we're coming over here, let's go color user daughter. Oh yes, in Octane, it's called MG color something. You should see that node pop up. Yeah, that's how you get it. Cool, let's plug this into our color over here. And let's change our preset from MoGraph to MoGraph color. And now you'll see that each of these are following a different color. Now all we need to do is grab a ramp throw our ramp in here and choose a gradient. So I'm just going to use something like this. Uh, just bring this close like this uh, and maybe instead of black, let's use something like white. Obviously you guys can choose a better colored palette. Actually, let me just use this for now because I think that'll give us a nice result. Cool. And then let's see how that looks like now that it's cached. And look at that. We have a really cool result over here. Uh, obviously, pick a different color palette to this because it doesn't look very nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the default color palettes that are here, you can get some really nice results from. I mean, yeah, this already looks really nice. Uh, for mine, I used a orange color palette. I think I got it from coolers.co. Um, 
yeah, they have a bunch of color palettes, but yeah, find a color palette that suits you. And I think the only other thing that I did to this was just maybe add a tiny bit of metalness and then just some basic uh, uh, lights, <laughs> sorry, some basic lighting. Actually, we have time. Let's light the scene. Let's do a full scene over here. Cool, so with our graph over here, I mean with our dome light, let's go and click add graph. Go into our dome lights, texture, when it decides to work with me. Come on, there we go. Let's search for C14, shader, bring this into the texture zero, change this to 1024 by 10.4. We don't really need it to be too big, seeing as that we're just going to be using a gradient. And let's grab a gradient over here. Change this to circular. And then let's just move this around a bit till we find something that we like. I just want a subtle gradient like that. I think that's fine. So it's not a big difference, but there's enough of a difference up there. Then let's grab a area light. Bring that back there. Let's just bring down our intensity a bit. That looks nice. Uh, I'm just going with the idea that this side's a little bit uh, lighter than this side, so therefore the light should be coming from this side. That's the main thing over there. And then I think maybe all we need to do is just add one more light. That's just gonna come from behind just to kind of get some nice highlights in the background. Or, sorry, to catch some highlights in the back of this. Yeah, I think something like that looks good. Then all we need to do is set up a camera. Let's set this to a nice close angle. Something like that. And if you want maybe just one other camera. And we can look at this downwards. So if we can see our spiral over here. And, you know, this could be a logo. Could be whatever you choose. But, yeah. Uh, I'll obviously spend a little bit more time on the lighting. You can see we are clipping over here, which does not look great. But yeah, you guys can go and refine this and make it your own. But yeah, for now, I think this is enough for this tutorial. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I had fun doing it, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next week. Don't forget, if you're interested in the project file, there's a link in my description. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, I mean, if you want to also follow me, my Instagram is... I don't think it's in the description, but it popped up on screen. It's just motion and design. But yeah, have a good one, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.